Oh, boy. Good morning, family. Hey, don't forget your beet juice this morning. Don't forget it. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Oh my goodness. I finally got some sleep. Um, you know, every day is a is a new day, as it should be. But it, and it presents every day presents its own set of challenges and um because, but it's a new day for you to make some different choices. You have an opportunity to, um, you know, uh, stop and, and look around and um, make some different decisions for your life. That's what today represents, okay? But I want to, first of all, uh, thank each and every one of y'all out there, again, who have reached out to me. Let me say hello to Nikki. And all my family, uh, Robert and Tori and Paul, and, um, Ashley, Chrissy, Brittany, Rihanna. I mean, all of y'all. And um, I'm I'm just reaching out to for y'all because um, we've all gone through so much in the last year, and it seems like our um, bereavement is just nonstop. And I get it. Um, we've been through a lot. And I think that uh, how we celebrate our love for one another is very important. And it's important for y'all to understand that if you don't see me, and because you don't see me, doesn't mean I don't love you any less. And um, it's important that you also understand that I honor, <laughs> maybe especially because of... Um, um, I, I, I deal with my mother and my father who are both in their 80s, their late 80s on a continuous basis. I have to be very, very careful about the road that I travel and who is allowed in our space um, and her space as well. Because, you know, it amazes me. I think a lot of us as black people really don't think this pandemic is real. I, I've come to the conclusion and we don't mind going to super spreader events. We don't mind. Um, well, I'm, I mean, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful. We 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 don't mind just throwing something away because we are emotionally um, unbalanced, you know. And when our emotions get out of um, balance, uh, those of us who are Christians, you know, the, the, we'll rely on something that is. Um, uh, in my opinion, you know, superficial. And then if you're another kind of religion, maybe you're, you know, whatever. You, you, you're you going to take this the opportunity to, you know, say, well, I'm not going to follow precautions or whatever because uh, Jesus is going to heal us and all that. I'm not a fan of that school, okay? I'm, I'm really not. Uh, nor of the uh, dogma and the brainwashing. So, um, that is bother that bothers me. What bothers me even more is I know why our statistics are so high in terms of the um corona. And because we don't know what it is, what it really is, all we gotta think about is people we know. And if any of y'all is over there in Detroit under the sound of my voice, y'all can tell them what goes on, what's, what's up, and what they did last summer in Bell Isle. That was so crazy, and it brought it so real for me when I saw all those dead black people along Bell Isle just, just lined up, lined up, looked like thousands and thousands of feet of individuals, and it made it real for me. And so I... um. I need to let people know, first of all, that um, while saying that um, I, there won't be those kind of arrangements for my brother, I just know that the, uh, the, the standard for Wisconsin is stay home, 
as much as possible, cancel events and avoid groups. I mean, I don't understand how much more plainer something can be for us. I know people have passed. I mean, of course I know it's my brother. And if y'all don't understand that, if we don't start being more responsible, that um, a lot more of us are going to be passing away from COVID or, or, or whatever the hell this, this devil got out here floating around for us. So although I'm not the next of kin, I wouldn't encourage my niece to have a ceremony at all because my brother and her father is gone. He's been gone for over a week now. And we individually had to have our talk with the spirit of, of my brother or those of us who, um, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, are able to converse with one another. That's how we're doing our grief. When you're dealing with, first of all, 80 and, el you know, elderly parents, not only have some of y'all been so disrespectful um, in thinking that you can tell my mother some of this information, which is not yours to tell her. That is so disrespectful. And um, I just know that we need a lot of work in certain areas because um, anytime you can get a mandate that comes down from the state and then people asking you, well, where is service and when is it going to be? You know? or, or you're involved with coming to his elderly mother's house without a mask without not even saying that somebody's gonna let you in anyway but the fact that you would even come without masks on and those of you who have you know who you are so um it's gotten to the point where i'm like okay without showing stepping back from my emotion and my anger right now i need to allow y'all to understand that the greatest gift that you can ever learn is just to love and be loved in return. And my brother was that. He was loved and he was loved in return. This ceremony and all this stuff that y'all want, that's for y'all. That's for your benefit. If you want to be involved in a super spreader, I mean, I, I wouldn't advise it. But that's fine. Y'all do whatever you need to do. And whether you distance yourselves or do whatever, I'm saying we're not putting ourselves at risk at this time for that. If it was up to me, that's exactly what it would be. But, you know, I don't have the final say. But that is what I'm. my vote says. My vote says, Ricky's gone. The ceremony we have is for him, for y'all, not for him. I'm sorry, for y'all. But you know he loved you. Otherwise, you wouldn't love him so much. So why would you risk your lives? And we're in a pandemic. Um, we're in a we're in a pandemic still, people. So you can say. Oh, he was dressed up nicely. And oh, you see how they laid him out. And oh, can you listen? Get a grip. It's time to get serious about everything. The way we destroying ourselves in this community. The way we killing each other, and then you look around the neighborhood, and all you see is these makeshift graves from the mayhem and the violence and the murder that we do to one another. I ask God all the time to rain down love on us because it seems like we've lost it, and we're afraid to be alone. That's why I was so glad to hook back up with my therapist because y'all really had knocked me off my square for a minute. And um, to have an extra session really did me some <laughs> uh, extra time to come out of nowhere and talk. And then I got a real special group of spiritual sisters that keep me in check. And if I wouldn't have had them, I don't know if I could have got through last week because a lot of you guys 
were very disrespectful. A lot of you were questioning why we uh, we made the decision not to tell my parents uh, what has happened, which is none of your business. Some of you have uh, even gone so far as to come by, again, without masks. We don't even know you, people we're not, we're not even familiar with. And I don't know if you expected my mother to answer the door, but if she would, you wouldn't be honoring any kind of COVID protocols. All that because you emotionally can't process what has happened to my brother. Again, I don't mean to sound cruel. I mean to tell you the truth. Okay? I'm telling you the truth right now. I'm telling you what God loves. So, I think it's very, very, very imperative that I make this video today. I think it's very important that you stop the spread. And you stop thinking in terms of, where are we going to go? Where are we going to meet? What are we going to do? People call me. even, And I'm thankful for the preachers that reached out. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to need some of y'all to um, do a little less emotional um, exercising and a little bit more spiritual um, interaction. If, when, if you love Rick like you say you do, why don't you talk to him? Since God is a spirit and we worship him in spirit and in truth, why don't y'all have a spiritual conversation with Rick? And I guarantee you he will understand and he would even welcome, he would want you to put yourself in harm's way. I would hope. I don't know how Rick was, but no. I would hope that. Um, I know Rick's a party animal, and he, and he likes to go, and he loves people when he's everywhere as this. But I'm sure he wouldn't want to be a cause of being in a super, a super spreader event. This man is loved by a lot of people because he loved a lot of people. And that's the greatest gift that you can you can ever learn. How did George Benson say, Nature Boy, uh, 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 Nat Cole? The greatest thing. What is it? <laughs> you can ever learn is just to love. And be loved in return. He lived that. He lived loving. Somebody sent the video to me the other day with him laughing and uh, first seeing Snapchat and all the things you can do on Apple. And it brought tears to my eyes because I knew I'm not going to never hear that hard, hearty, crazy laugh. No, and I'm not going to just go put on a bunch of tapes or look at a bunch of video so I can keep obsessing. My brother's gone. And again, it is a bond a man wants to die and then the judgment. So I'm going to pass. You're going to pass. We all going to pass. And the best thing you do is to live. Right? And, and you're going to figure out a way to uh, break some traditions, especially during the pandemic, because I'm not going to contribute to it. Now, I would hope that his daughter wouldn't either, but she may. I don't know. You know? However, whatever happens, I'll keep you informed if she doesn't announce it herself. But as far as we're concerned, his immediate family, his siblings, we're not telling our mother or our father. And we were hoping that you would respect that. You know, anybody knows they deal with somebody like in the, in the final stages of Alzheimer's, they go in and they go out. And if you give them something depressing when they come in, they're going to continue to stay with that depressed thought the whole time. You can't do my family like that. You are not. 
involved in their every every everyday health uh, diagnosis and prognosis. And how dare you? How dare you try to inflict that upon us because you emotionally can't handle it. We got to handle it. You know we hurt. And I appreciate your comfort. But when it gets, there's a, there's a, a big line between comfort and invasion and disrespect. Not wearing masks. Not honoring protocols. Those are the kind of things that are unacceptable. And those are the things, as black people, we got a problem with. Period. I ain't speaking for white folk. I'm speaking about us. So I'm not in, I'm, I'm, I'm letting y'all know right now. Um, again, even in my thankfulness of, of y'all loving Ricky, I know that he loved y'all back. And that's the only reason you can love him like that. And so with that being said, um, I would hope all of y'all stay home as much as possible. Cancel events and avoid groups, gathering and play dates. Limit your trips. Yeah, down in in a, uh uh was it Florida, Georgia? I'm looking at the black people dying. We don't got no insurance, most of us. Yeah. And we the main ones want to get up at a super spray event. You know, those are the things I want y'all to be mindful of. I, you have to. It's also mandatory to wear a mask. You shouldn't be coming to anybody's home without a mask. You know? Those are just things uh, from the dumb corner. I'm just telling you. We got to do better, family. So to each and every one who has reached out to me again, and us, my daughter, and my nieces, um, I know not, I don't think none of y'all hardly reached out to any of my other brothers. Uh, probably because, you know, I don't know why actually. Y'all only y'all can know, but I feel compelled to at least do a check in. Um. I have a brother that's in law enforcement. So for those of y'all who think that we should take suspects' pictures and plaster them everywhere, that's not a good idea because you have to let law enforcement do their job. That's being emotional and it's not being respectful that they do have a job to do. Now, when you feel they're not doing their job, and if you can prove that, then you go to the next level. But you don't undermine police work for your emotional uh, well-being. You have to learn how to get your emotions under control. That's what's wrong with us in this community, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. We are emotionally unbalanced, and that's why we got so much killing. That's why we have these things. We have not learned how to control and to get a grip on our emotions. And I don't expect the church to help in this area so I'm telling y'all now, and they, if anything, they're going to play into all that emotion. So you want to figure out a way to get up under that for a minute and actually be true to what they say on paper. If God is a spirit and that we worship him in spirit and in truth, then we don't have to worship him in a congregation hall. We don't need to do our arms all out in public for everybody, especially in a pandemic. But how, how about we do our best to see if we can bring out some of our spirituality that God gave us all the way from back in, in on the continent. Our spirituality. Close your eyes and summon him to your bedside. Do what the ancient Africans did. When they had a person who made a transition. Of course, they didn't have no pandemic. 
but we have to take extra precaution. We're vi more violent now than we ever have been. That's why my brother's not here anymore. That's why he's not here. We emotionally out of order, out of balance. You got something I want, and I got something you want, and, and you don't want to work for it. You actually feel like you can take it from me. And that has become normal in this community. That has become normal for us to steal, you know, and do all kinds of stuff, and then don't want to hold nobody accountable for their behavior. You know, this is how we act sometimes, and I've had I've had experiences with this a lot. You know how sometimes you know they tell you when you make a big purchase, then it's called buyer's remorse. You know how you make a big purchase, and then the next day, or you know a couple of days later, you be like, "Oh, I shouldn't have did that." You know, now you all freaking out and your heart start beating. You, you get that thing in the pit of your stomach, like, oh, I've made a wrong choice. No, I got to go. This and, um, let me say something. There is no bias remorse with death. It's fine. It's fine. Remorse that any of y'all should ever feel is when you're not living up to your highest potential. Your highest potential. That should really, really, really disturb you. If you at a point where you can't follow rules and regulations and uh, everything is um, what I want to do and you don't have no rules, no limitations, and no boundaries for your lives. It's unhealthy. One of the reasons, you know, I love, you know, talking about moving to the continent and experiencing what we've experienced on a continuous basis is because that's where you get your, I've, I've never had a situation where the stress is eliminated. And I don't think as long as we stay right here on this continent and be satisfied and we don't know no, nothing else but this continent, murder constantly on a daily basis, mass pandemic on a daily basis, robbery. Murder, mayhem, uh, it does something to your spirit. Plus bad weather and no vitamin D. That's not where God placed us. God didn't make no mistakes. He knew exactly where he wanted us to be placed. The European brought us over here. So there's a lot of things we got to unlearn just to get back healthy. Just to get back healthy. But I think you should start with knowing your mind, body, and soul, right? You can't have one of them all out the picture, all out, all out of balance. You have to bring it to order. And it's difficult under a lot of circumstances. A lot of us haven't been taught how to meditate or taught how to be still. All we know how does it get more and more and more excited. I don't know. Maybe you can't take this time right now until we find out something to reflect. Because that's all we've been doing. Individually talking to each other on the phones. I haven't seen my older brother in a year because of the pandemic. I talk to him every day. I haven't seen him. And I don't want him to come in our environment. 
have an 87-year-old dad, by the way, who got COVID, and he recovered. And that was just from going to a doctor's appointment. You think I'm taking any chances? Uh -uh. No super spreader events do I want to be part of. And that's from the Wisconsin Health Department, the mandate from the state, okay? So, again, y'all, I love you. And I don't mean to sound cruel, but I got to tell you the truth. I got to tell you the truth. Be still and know. God is with you. Ricky's gone now. Y'all got to live. And we got to stay safe. We got to stay safe. Under any and every circumstance. So with that being said, um, leave your comments below. I'm, I'm definitely open to answering any questions today. It's the first time I had somewhat of a voice back. So I'm not talking, I'm easing my voice in. My voice has been overworked. But we talk um, and we have certain emotions that we have to get out. So I figure I'd come here and, and, and release them to y'all. And hopefully you'll give me some back about how y'all feeling. Okay? So again, hi to everybody out there. If I missed anybody, you know I still love you. Um, I hope all is well. Keep praying for us. And... um Remember again, the greatest thing you can ever learn is just to love and be loved in return. Thanks, y'all. I'm going to have to see you in the next video. So leave your comments below.